Our expert today is Barbara O'Neill, a renowned health and wellness educator with a wealth of knowledge in natural health solutions. With years of experience as a naturopath and nutritionist, Barbara has dedicated her career to helping people achieve optimal health through holistic approaches. She is highly respected for her extensive research and practical advice on bone health, making her a trusted source for information on how to naturally strengthen and maintain healthy bones. In this video, you'll discover the essential steps to naturally strengthen your bones and prevent common issues like osteoporosis. You'll learn the real truth about calcium and the other crucial minerals your body needs. I Plus, you will learn the number one exercise to boost your bone strength without stressing your joints and how it can make a difference in just 10 minutes a day. Stay tuned as we delve into these life-changing insights. Your journey to stronger, healthier bones starts now. So let's dive in. Drawing a sun when we're talking about bones. Will the ultraviolet rays from the sun hit the skin? And when they hit the skin, they convert a form of cholesterol to vitamin D. What's converted to vitamin D? Cholesterol. It's a very important lipid in the human body, is cholesterol. Dr. Malcolm Kendrick said, for the first time, normal levels of a normal vital body substance is being called a disease. What's that cholesterol? So, the ultraviolet rays from the sun hit the skin and convert a form of cholesterol just under the skin to vitamin D. And vitamin D is essential in the assimilation of calcium and the utilization of calcium in the body. Vitamin D is also being hailed today as the anti-cancer vitamin. In fact, the research is showing that it can stop cancer in its tracks and even convert the cell back to a healthy cell. That's quite remarkable. So your bones need for you to be having vitamin D. But I've got some other shocking news for you. And you might say, Barbara, you've already shocked us enough. <laughs> bones aren't made of calcium. Well, what are bones made of? They're made of 12 minerals and 64 trace. What are the 12 minerals? Calcium, chromium, boron, iron, magnesium, manganese, silica, sulfur, selenium, potassium, phosphorus, and iron, and we're done iron, zinc. That's what bones are made of, and 64 trace. <coughs> so what do bones need, students? Definitely not calcium supplements. That's another deception. And in the book, The Calcium Lie, by Dr. Robert Thompson, he talks about the calcium lie, talks about the fat lie, talks about the cholesterol lie. Whew. And when we read the Bible and realize that that great dragon, that old deceiver, the, the devil and Satan, which has deceived the whole world. So, it's not rocket science really, is it? What do our bones need? <coughs> that. So if you've got calcium supplements, the best thing you can do with them is put them in the bin. Do you call it a bin? In America they call it a trash can. I just want to be really clear here. Trash. Rubbish. Trash. Rubbish, Rubbish. yeah. In fact, in the book The Calcium Lie, Dr. Robert Thompson, he actually says that calcium supplements can deplete even more calcium out of your bones. The pharmaceutical companies, they make all these drugs, then they've got another section. Guess what's in another section? Vitamins and minerals. And there's not a big stockpile of vegetables out in the backyard that they're making them from. They're in a form that your body can't access. Yes? <laughs> yeah, it's a, it, it doesn't help. Calcium hardens cement, it does not harden bones. But what it can do is harden your tissues. It can build up on your arteries, it can actually contribute to calcium deposits in your, 
in your kidneys, in your gall, bladder, even build up on the eyes. So where do we get that from? Dr. Robert Thompson states that the clearest indicator of a creator God is seawater because it's the exact same mineral balance and proportion as is found in the body. You think about it. We cry seawater, we sweat seawater, we urinate out seawater. Every cell in the body is bathed in seawater. That's why a salt-free diet is quite crazy, actually. So I've got some more good news. You don't have to drink seawater. <laughs> Do you know it says in the sailor's manual that if they're shipwrecked and they sip little bits of water every day, it'll keep them alive for a long time. But if they don't drink any water for three days and get very dehydrated and drink a whole glass full of seawater, that can throw an imbalance and they can go quite mad. So we don't need to drink seawater. All we need to do is get the whole salt, Celtic salt or Himalayan salt, that has all of those minerals in it. Dr. Robert Thompson states that if you take a little crystal of salt in your mouth, give it a little chomp, drink your glass of water, you do that with every glass of water. That's eight times a day. And what's a, what's a baked potato without salt? I'm asking you. Huh? And what's, what's avocado on tomato on rye bread or spelt bread without salt. Our palate tells us we need salt. And in Matthew chapter 5 verse 13, the Bible says, Ye are the salt of the earth. If the salt hath lost its savour, wherewith shall it be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden under foot of men. If the salt hath lost its savour, how does salt lose its savour? I'd like to suggest that the table salt has lost its savour because it's only two minerals. So throw your calcium supplements out and the money that you usually use to buy calcium supplements, buy the Celtic salt. There's another place you'll find these minerals and that is dark green leafy vegetables. Dark green leafy vegetables are phenomenally high in these minerals. That's all you need to do. That's what bones need. Bones need these minerals. Bones need sun. Make sure you get some sun every day. But don't go and lie in the sun just after you've had a shower and washed yourself with soap because you've washed all the oils away and you won't get vitamin D. Once you've had a shower and washed your body with soap, you need to wait two hours at least before the oil is formed on your skin and then you'll get the vitamin D. And once you've been in the sun, don't go and have a hot shower and wash yourself with soap because it takes two hours for the vitamin D to be formed. You don't need a lot of sun to get vitamin D, but you need to have um, exposure to the sun. You can overdo the sun, but the problem today is most people are underdoing the sun. It's not the enemy in the sky. It'll only burn you if you overdo it. There's a bit of common sense required here, is that right? So, to get strong bones, you need sun. You need to be having the whole salt and dark green leafy vegetables. And there is one food that's phenomenally high in calcium and it's in with the other minerals so it's, it's in a good form and that is sesame seed. And a great way to use sesame seed is as tahini. My kids used to love tahini and honey on toast. And also we make dressings, tahini, lemon juice, crushed garlic, salt, something like that. Tomorrow, when the brain's had a sleep, I can probably um, give you the recipe. Well, hummus and uh, baba gumush, a lot of Lebanese dishes use tahini. Also, uh, chickpeas are also a good source. So these are foods that will help boost calcium. 
And dried figs, dried figs are quite high. But what most people do, unfortunately, they take things that leach the calcium. So what are the leaches? What leaches calcium out of the body is high acid food. So that's a high carbohydrate diet, high carb, high wheat, refined sugar, and caffeine. All your caffeine drinks, coffee, tea, coke, all of those are calcium leaches. Milk, good question. Here's a glass of milk. And this glass of milk is high in calcium, but it's also high in animal protein. And animal protein is very dirty burning fuel. Only 52%, sorry, it's 58% is burnt as fuel. Do you know what that leaves? A 42% waste. And that's a high acid waste, it's a sulfur waste. And so what the body uses is it uses the most alkaline mineral, which is calcium, to negate the sulfur residue. Do you know how much calcium is left for the human body after a person drinks a glass of milk? None. Cows can access that calcium because they've got five stomachs. We've only got one. And the countries in this world that are the highest dairy consumers have the highest incidence of osteoporosis. Where does the elephant get his calcium from for his huge bones? Where does the orangutan? The creatures in this planet with the biggest bones are vegetarians. They get it from grass. I've got some good news. You don't have to eat grass. You can eat broccoli and bok choy and all your dark green leafies. You don't lose your minerals when you cook them. You only lose the minerals when you cook if you throw the water away. I like to use waterless cooking. Put on a very low heat, get a heavy bottom pan, put a lid on and it'll just cook gently in its own juice. Without any water, you've got to keep it on a low heat, it'll take a little while. You can also do things in crock pots because that's a very low heat. You've just got to take a bit more time to do it. So. Cow's milk is not going to give you calcium. So the biggest bone and muscle strengtheners is rebounding. Rebounding is the little trampoline. You see, strength comes by exercise. And strength comes by defying gravity. Defying gravity is the most powerful form of strength building exercise. I have a book by Albert Carter. It's called Rebounding, something about rebounding. And he was a trampolinist. He was a champion trampolinist. And he married and had two little children. And he used to do a trampoline show. He'd go around and his little four-year-old girl and his... Um, I don't know, little eight-year-old boy, they used to trampoline with him. And he noticed that if he held his daughter's feet, she could do one-arm push-ups. And his little boy at school, he would do a thousand push-ups. No kid <coughs> couldn't come near him. And he thought, why are my kids so strong? It was the rebounding, the constant trampolining. You see, every time you jump, there's, you're putting a little stressor on your body and every time you put a stressor on your body, it keeps adapting and adjusting, adapting and adjusting. So he was intrigued as to why it was so powerful and he came to NASA and NASA, I think I mentioned the other day, NASA found that when their athletes came back from outer space, they'd lost so much muscle and bone strength because there's no gravity. And the only exercise they found that prepared them for no gravity and also um, it resumed their strength much quicker than any other was the rebounding. Uh, or they also found that rebounding increased their G-force. 
which has increased their body's ability to withstand going into outer space. But Albert Carter, he wanted to know more. And this is what he found, that rebounding pulls together three laws or three teachers. One is define gravity. So you look at children. As soon as they are able, I was watching my little six weeks old grandson and he's constantly pulling his head up. And then you put him on the floor, what are they doing? Pushing up, pushing up, and then they push up to the point where they can crawl. And then what, what, what do they want to do next? They want to walk. <coughs> and then when they're in their comp, what are they doing? Jumping. <coughs> And if you've got a rebounder in your house and children visit, where do you think they're going to go straight away? The rebounder. I had a trampoline outside and uh, whenever I had kids in my home, they'd come up, can we please, can we please go on the, on the trampoline? Why do I say I had one? Well, we had a big storm one day and when I came back from being away, it was down on the road all crumpled up the storm and <laughs> blown my trampoline away. But I got a little rebounder in the house and the children like that. So defying gravity, that's the, that's the only way to, to strengthen the body and the bones, is def, to defy gravity. The other law that comes together with rebounding is acceleration. And the third law or teacher is deceleration. I don't know whether I should put two C's in there or one. One, I just heard. Okay, sorry. I know there are a few teachers here. I've got to get it right. When you are jumping on the trampoline, the rebounder, when you're going up in the air, you're accelerating. And just as you get to the peak, deceleration. And then when you're going down, acceleration. And then when you hit the map, deceleration. So the three laws come together. And he also has a quote in his book from Al, um, is it Einstein? Einstein, one of the great masters, who says the body doesn't know the difference between defying gravity, acceleration and deceleration. It sees it all as the same. So there's these constant little shocks that are strengthening the body. This is the only exercise that affects every single cell in the body. It strengthens every muscle. It strengthens the bones in the body. Nothing else doesn't. So what's important to do to strengthen your muscles and your bones is the rebounding. Now while I'm talking about rebounding, I have to talk about something else and it's your body's vacuum cleaner. Did you know that your body's vacuum cleaner is your lymphatic system? And your lymphatic system has a network of capillaries all the way through it that are like little canals. And these little canals have gates. Now your circulatory system is what carries the blood. And it has a pump and that's your heart. And it pumps the blood through the arterial system way down to the extremities. Well, how does it get back? Do you ever wonder that? You've got a second pump, and forgive the illustration, but here's your second pump, your calf. Your calf muscles are your second heart. It's your calf muscles that pump the blood back up to the rest of your body. Now there is a, a problem that some women and some men get called varigous veins. Do you know the best cure for varigous veins is rebounding because when you're rebounding that majorly stimulates your, your second heart which is your calf muscle. And what happens with varigous veins is the blood's tending to sit and pool in the, in the Ve venous system. You see your arteries come away from the heart, the venous system is coming back to the heart. Even just the health bounce, just even going like that is strengthening your or moving your second heart, your calf muscles. Around your capillary system, your blood network, there are muscles and as the heart pumps 
it, it causes muscular contractions all through your, your um, artillery, artillery, do you like that one? Artery, arterial, must be getting late, uh, arterial system. But your lymphatic system, it has a network of capillaries too but it doesn't have a muscular system around it and it does not have a pump. So how does it get activated? Movement. But there is one exercise that stimulates the lymphatic system in a more powerful way than any other exercise and that is the rebounding. And this is what happens when you're rebounding. When you're jumping, when you accelerate up to the point of getting deceleration on the tip of your bounce, every single gate in the whole of the lymphatic system is open. And when you hit the mat, every single gate closes. And then when you go up again, every gate opens. And when you hit the mat again, every gate closes. Does it affect does it affect the joints? There is no jarring on the joints because you've got to bounce. Whereas if you run, your joints jar. But not on the rebounding because you get this cushioning. When people don't exercise and they hardly move, can you see that their lymphatic system isn't stimulated? So what's happening in the tissues? The waste is building up. Do you remember the story I told you about Bobby who had his lymph node in his thigh removed and his legs were huge and I got him rebounding every hour. Just a minute, every hour. Just, just to get that lymphatic system. You see, when anyone that's got swelling in their body, it's lymphatic. It's lymphatic fluid. And the rebounding is often called a lymphocyzer because it has such a powerful, powerful effect on the uh, lymphatic system. So once you Google and investigate the wonders of the rebounding exercises, now the rebounder that we have is one of the best. It's called a knee duck. It's important to get a good quality one so you get a good bounce because cheaper ones are very hard. But the... the um, the ones that are a little bit more expensive, they're just much better quality and they basically spring you up in the air. They've got such a good spring on them. The good news is you only have to do three minutes three times a day. How good is that? Or you can do your interval training in the morning and do it all at once. For someone who's really challenged with swollen lymphatic fluid in their body, they can do it for one minute every single hour. It is such a powerful form of exercise that you don't need to do very much. A girlfriend of mine has her rebounder in the lounge room and she says her little boy plays with Lego and she said about every 10 minutes she timed him one day, he jumps up and rebounds for about three minutes then runs back and plays with Lego. Who tells him to do that? His body is telling him to do that. So the best muscle strengthening is rebounding. The best bone strengthening is rebounding. Are there any questions? Who's that? Elderly people, it's excellent for elderly people because you can get rebounders with um, frames. So they just hold on to them. And while they're getting their confidence, all they have to do is that. That's called the health bounce. Just that. <laughs> With feet not even leaving the mat. There's your health bounce. And that is enough to activate the lymphatic system. But of course, the, when you start jumping, and it won't be long before the elderly people are jumping, I can assure you. <laughs> yes? With joints, it's the best exercise there is because there's no jarring, because there's this cushioning, springing bounce. Pardon? 
When you skip, every time you come on the ground, you've got a jar. 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 <laughs> yes? Horse riding. What do you think? <laughs> Yes, I've met quite a few people with some fairly serious injuries from horse riding. <laughs> I haven't met anyone with serious injuries from, from rebounding. Horse riding can be a lot of fun and horse riding certainly is your jigging up and down and it's the horse that's getting the jarring, I guess. Yes? Yeah? Pardon? Well, you can get a trampoline or you can get a rebounder. And a rebounder is little and it just sits in your lounge room. It's about this big. That's a rebounder. Pardon? You see, it only takes up a little bit of room. And when you're not using it, you can put it up on its side and just put it behind the lounge. Rain, hail or shine, you can rebound her. There's a heat wave outside, just rebound inside. There's a snowstorm outside, you're just rebounding. Some women say, I can't exercise, I've got children. Rebound. You might have to fight them for it. What causes arthritis and how to solve it? In my book, there's a chapter on acid alkaline. Um, when I was in Singapore the other evening, I gave a whole lecture on acid alkaline. My acid alkaline lecture is on, is on YouTube. Um, so when someone has arthritis, they need to go to more alkaline foods and they need to rebound and they need to make sure they're well hydrated and if they have pain in the joints they can take high dose turmeric. Turmeric is um, a powerful anti-inflammatory. Last June I was, went to Scotland and I was pulling my heavy bags off the, because I was travelling for about six weeks and I didn't realise that I tore my supraspinatus tendon. No voice. Now your supraspinatus tendon is about uh, nearly two inches wide and your supraspinatus tendon is what gets your arm up that far and then your deltoid takes it over there. So. Uh, to make a long story short, in about August I had a lot of pain and I could not lie on my arms so I had an MRI and my, my um, chiropractor rang me up and he said, are you ready for it? He said, you've got a full thickness tear of your supraspinatus tendon and a one centimetre retraction. He said, your bicep tendon is torn longitudinal and out of the groove, you have a supraspinatus tendon no, that's super, infraspinatus and subscapularis tear here. He said, you got it bad. So he said, I suggest you go to an orthopaedic surgeon. So I went to an orthopaedic surgeon. I was impressed with this young man because he was about 40 and he was very fit. And he looked at my arm. Now, as soon as I found out I had the tears, I started to do comfrey root poultices. And comfrey has a growth stimulant in it and it's growing all around my house. I planted it there. And it was winter so I grate up the root and I'd put a poultice on it for five hours twice a day. And I was taking high dose uh, turmeric to get the inflammation down. I was taking 6,000 milligrams of turmeric a day. And I could get 8 out of 10 pain down to 2 out of 10 pain with the turmeric and the poultice. So I'd been doing that for three weeks before I saw the surgeon and he wanted to know what I could do. I could, I could lift it a little bit. He was shocked at what I could do considering what it said on the MRI. He said, how serious is this? He said, well, you've got a one centimetre retraction. He said, that's a total tear. He said, I have never seen that join. He said, you will need surgery to stitch those two together. And he showed me on the computer 
that they can make a little slit and just a little slit there and they can do the whole thing. It's actually incredible surgery what they can do now. And I said, wow. I said, when can you do it? And he said, well, are you, have you got private health care? I said, no. He said, well, you'll have to go on a list. I said, oh. I said, is this serious? Do I need to do it soon? He said, no, it's not that serious. He said, what have you been doing? And I told him and he went, hmm, I've heard about Comfrey. And then he wrote down on my check because I thought, well, I'll, I'll book in for, a, um, for the theatre because it's quick and easy. I said, what if I just hire you? How much do you cost? He said, oh, I charge $2,000 for that. I thought, yeah, I'll pay $2,000 to have that fixed quickly. He said, but then you'd have to hire an operating theatre and then you'd have to hire nurses <laughs> and then you'd have to hire an anaesthetist and that'll be about $10,000. I said, forget it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> when I left, he said, keep up the good work, young lady. <laughs> and I was puzzled when he said that. And when I opened the, the form to, to go on... Uh, you know, the list to wait, he put 12 months. In other words, he doesn't think this is a, a serious at all. So I just kept up my turmeric and I just kept up my comfrey poultices and I have no pain and I have full use of my arm. <laughs> and I think I did that for about three months but I don't do it anymore because I've got no pain. So about three weeks ago, I got a call that they've got a vacancy fee for me for surgery. <laughs> and I said, forget it. <laughs> now I could go back and see Stuart Kennedy and I could go and have an MRI. Oh, but I haven't got time and it costs money. But I'm just very glad that I've got full use of my arms and muscles now. So now I must build up. So what I do every day is I rebound like this. And when I rebound like that, I'm strengthening bicep. And when I rebound like that, I'm strengthening triceps. Now for a while, I couldn't rebound like that for very long, but I can rebound for 10 jumps like that now and 10 jumps like that now. So I have retained full strength in this now for such a serious injury. And I'm so glad that I went through that. You know, the Bible says in everything give thanks because people say to me, well, how much turmeric can you take a day? And I say, well, I was taking 6,000. And they say, but it doesn't give you diarrhea. Well, it didn't give me diarrhea. And you've probably heard that it's said that if you're going to take turmeric, you must take it with black pepper. Have you heard that? Well, I didn't take any black pepper and it certainly, um, it certainly took my pain away. There was a while where I couldn't even do my hair. <laughs> there was a while where Michael had to help me with everything, but I have full use of my... I don't know what's happening in there. I guess it's joined. I don't know. It works. <laughs> so that's the only time I've had an MRI. And I can even lie on my shoulder now. I couldn't lie on it for a while and now I know why. There was no tendon there to stop it. So when I laid on it, it was actually hitting my, my shoulder bone. That's why it was hurting. So another illustration of an amazing piece of machinery that we live in and its ability to heal itself. Thank you for watching. We hope these insights have provided you with valuable knowledge on how to naturally strengthen your bones and improve your overall health. Remember, it's not just about calcium, it's about a balanced approach to nutrition and lifestyle. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more health tips. Stay healthy and see you next time.